Welcome to another episode of the Intondo podcast, the podcast that brings vintage stories back into circulation. This is Umberta Genta and today we have a particularly captivating journey ahead. We delve into the world of vintage cameras, explore the iconic photography of Lee Miller, the American fashion model turned into war photographer during the Second World War, who is deeply connected with great artists like Picasso and Man Ray. We'll uncover her mysterious picture taken in Adolf Hitler's bathroom and wander through the enchanting interiors of an English country house, which became the hub of surrealist artists. How are all this connected? Well, what triggered this journey is the exciting news about Lee, the new movie starring Kate Winslet as Lee Miller. Lee was born in 1907 in Poughkeepsie, New York, and began her career as a fashion model in New York City during the 1920s, working with renowned photographers like Edward Steichen. However, she soon transitioned to photography herself, motivated by a desire for new experiences, an appetite for adventure, and a relentless pursuit of capturing the world's complexities through her lens. Here she is in 1935, at the age of 28, in a black and white portrait in, by an anonymous photographer, holding her Rolleiflex camera during a trip in Egypt. Vintage cameras such as the Rolleiflex are expected to be at the centre of the movie, a film that promises to be a cinematic treat for photography enthusiasts and collectors. Such cameras are those charming relics of a bygone era that continue to captivate photographers and collectors alike. These gems are more than just tools, they are pieces of history. The vintage camera market has seen a resurgence in recent years, with enthusiasts seeking the character and craftsmanship of these timeless devices. From the iconic Leica rangefinders to the elegant Rolleiflex and the analog reflex, vintage cameras have a soul that modern ones often lack. Each click of the shutter is a step back in time, a sort of connection to the photographers who wielded them. They remind us of a time when capturing an image was a deliberate and contemplative process, even in extreme situations such as the war, considering that a roll of film only allows a certain number of frames. How many available frames did Lee Miller have in her camera when she took one of the most striking photographs in history? As a war correspondent shortly after Munich was liberated in 1945, she made her way into Adolf Hitler's abandoned apartment. Once in Hitler's bathroom, she undressed, left her muddy boots from the battlefield on the floor and got in the tub, shooting a self-portrait that stands as a powerful symbol of the downfall of the Nazi tyranny. This is an iconic, almost surreal image telling us about Lee's approach to her work, as she used to say, Photography for me is not just about capturing a moment, it's about creating a new reality, one that speaks to the soul. Surrealism played a pivotal role in Lee Miller's whole life. After her brief career as a fashion model, her insatiable curiosity led her to Paris, where she became the muse of artist Man Ray and learned everything as a photographer by working with him. Her work spanned fashion and portraiture, landscape and ultimately documentary photography, especially during her first marriage, which took her to Egypt in the 30s. It was in Egypt that she took pictures such as Portrait of Space, which is said to have been the inspiration behind the painting The Kiss by surrealist artist René Magritte. Ultimately, the encounter with Roland Penrose, a prominent British surrealist artist and art collector who would later become her second husband, immersed her even more in the world of avant-garde art and also influenced significantly her artistic journey. In 1940, in the middle of the Second World War, Lee finds herself in London during the Blitz. She has no doubt on what is best to do. She goes to the offices of Vogue and gets herself a job as a photographer documenting the bombing. Shortly after, she's at the front line going to war, photographing what is happening, and the atrocities of the Nazi regime. Lee will be the first woman photographer to document the horrors of a Nazi concentration camp. Her camera was more than a piece of equipment. It was a portal to her artistic vision. Even when exposing the harsh realities of the war, even when documenting the human condition in all its forms, she naturally merged technical skills with an intuitive sense of composition, which resulted in photographs that continue to resonate with viewers today. 
In fact, while the movie premiered at the Toronto Film Festival in September and we await the dates for the release in European cinemas, several initiatives around the world rediscover Lee's work. In Italy, in the Palazzina di Caccia in Stupinigi, a historic royal hunting lodge and palace located just outside Turin, an exhibition of 100 shots selected from the photographer's archive is on view until January 2024 with the title Lee Miller, Photographer and Surrealist. At the same time, in New York, the Gagosian Gallery opens a glimpse into Miller's private life with the exhibition Seeing is Believing, Lee Miller and Friends, on view till the 22nd of December. This exhibition is centered on the marriage to Roland Penrose and the couple's intense social life and between the south of France, London, the United States and Farley's house in England. Talking about Farley's house is like venturing into the heart of Lee's creative world. Located in the Sussex countryside in England, from 1949, this Georgian estate served as both a home and a canvas for Lee's artistic vision and creativity because, even if she suffered terribly from depression after the war, she was able to reinvent herself here, surrounded by an eclectic collection of paintings, sculptures and photographs from renowned artists. Lee chose strong colours as a background for the works. Turquoise in a study, pink in the sitting room, yellow in the dining room, which also featured a mural painted by husband Roland. One of the most iconic spaces in Farley's house is the kitchen, featuring a Picasso style above the stove. It's here that Lee became a keen cook and host to her friends, not certainly giving up her penchant for surrealist ideals and surprising them with little tricks like dyeing the food extraordinary colours. Among the many guests of Farley's house were Man Ray, Picasso and Max Ernst, Dora Maar, Joseph Cornell and Henry Moore, just to name a few. The house's picturesque surroundings, including a beautiful garden and the Sussex countryside, offered an inspiring backdrop for their creative endeavours, an idyllic setting for surrealists to exchange ideas and engage in artistic experimentation. Farley's house is not merely a house, it is a work of art itself, and gladly, it is open to visitors from April to October, usually every Sunday and Thursday. Thank you for joining me on what I hope was both a journey through photography, art and interiors, and the attempt to preserve a story celebrating the artistry of the past. Let's continue to be inspired by Lee Miller's work and carriage, and the creative spirit she embodied. For more stories, stay tuned for the next Intondo podcast or visit Intondo.com.